Hi, and welcome to the Dog Sports Decoded podcast. My name is Megan Ritchie, and I am the host. And uh, you might see my dogs joining us today. We've got Riggs here behind me, and Tess is asleep on the floor, so we'll see if they stay that way. I've been getting a lot of questions at my store, High Drive, about dog sledding lately. So whether that's people that are looking for a kick sled or wanting to get in some groundwork before ski season so they can go ski joring, it seems to be on a lot of people's minds. Um, so I thought I would uh, discuss with you today how you can fit your dog for a harness. So what you're looking for in a harness and how to fit one. Uh, so that's what we're going to cover. Um, so you can see on the table I have uh, my handy dandy paper dog to, uh, to help with the demo. He doesn't move as much as my real dogs. So uh, I'm going to show you the measurements with him and um, let's get your dog fitted for a dog sledding harness. So the first thing we need to know is how to measure our dogs for a dog sledding harness. Um, and to discuss that we kind of have to know where it needs to fit. So um, I've got a little printout here. Uh, I'll throw it on the screen if I can, but I'll just show you um, super quickly if it will show up here. So you can see this is just an image I found online of a dog's skeleton. And where we want the harness to fit is along the sternum and uh, just at the tip of the sternum there. That's where we want the harness Y to fit. So I just wanted to show you that. I think it's easier to see um, when you look at the skeletal structure, but that's kind of the key point we are looking for um, when we measure. So. Uh, when you do this with your real dog, and I, I would recommend starting here, we're going to find that point on our dog um, before we even bring out the tape measures and stuff like that. So if you've got your dog handy, um, the best thing to do is just to start with your hand um, between their legs and you can kind of find the bone moving your hand back and forth and just follow that bone up um, basically until you see it plunge and disappear um, like we saw on that uh, diagram. So that's all I would do a few times, just make sure one, your dog's comfortable with you handling them that way, but also just to make sure you can find it, um, you know, without having a bunch of stuff in your hand. So again, just take your, take your hand along the middle of their um, chest, run your hand up until you can find that end point and where it disappears. So on this dog, we are going to, uh, to use this point here um, as our pretend sternum. Uh, but do that a couple times for your dogs next to you on the couch or whatever. Um, just run your hand up and see if you can find that point on their, uh, their sternum, their breastbone. So that's what we're going to look for when we do this. And then what uh, each manufacturer is a little bit different. So uh, definitely look to the individual manufacturer and what they tell you to measure. But uh, the pretty common measurement um, for all of them is going to be around the dog's neck from that sternum point to the point at the top of the shoulder blade to the withers. So those are the two points we are looking for with our, um, with our measurement. And so the full circle around the dog's neck, that's the measurement you're going to be looking for to find out where, where with whatever manufacturer you decide to purchase from, um, what their measurement is going to be. So that's one of the measurements we'll look at. You might see um, some of the other brands we carry at, so for Man Mat, uh, which we carry, that's the only measurement you need. Um, Adenac, uh, especially if you're doing a custom harness, there's a couple other um, measurements. Um, but some other ones you might see, you might see it around the dogs, uh, kind of between their legs to the withers. Sorry, withers. You might see that being a measurement. You might also see back of the body. Sorry. So from the withers to the kind of base of the tail. Um, another one that's pretty common, or shouldn't say pretty common, another one I've seen is... Um, from that sternum point through the legs, back, and back to the dog's tail. So that's going to tell you the length you need, especially important for an X-back harness. It really depends on the manufacturer whether they give you those measurements as a guideline or not, um, but those are some possibilities. So for today, we're going to focus on just measuring the dog's neck because that's what everybody uses as the base. So um, if you have a fabric measuring tape, um, so you can see this one. Uh, it'll zoom in maybe too close um, but just has the inches I think the other side is centimeters um, depending on the manufacturer you go with um, but a fabric type uh, measuring tape is going to be the easiest uh, to put around your dog's neck so um, I'm gonna take this and uh, you're gonna find that sternum point again here we're gonna pretend it's there around to the uh, the withers and um, and back. So on this dog, that would be 19 inches. So then that 19 inches would be the measurement I would use to go through the table to see if um, 
see what the right size is for my dog. So that's the base measurement. Almost every manufacturer will have that measurement somewhere. Again, you might have some other ones thrown in. So that's gonna be the important one. If you are kind of doing this solo, if you don't have somebody else to help you um, do the measurements, you could also just loop that, kind of roughly what you think your dog will be. Right, pass it over there. Need a bigger loop for my, my dog with, um, my paper dog, right? Pass it over their head, single-handed, and then you could just tighten that, and then kind of, if you've done any horseback riding, or even the dog leash, you can kind of feed more or less with that one finger. So I'll get a little closer. So if I wanted to make this bigger, I could just, I'm holding, I'm holding the, um, the two pieces together, uh, primarily with my index finger, and then I can just use my thumb to, uh, to slide a little bit more and make that neck bigger if I need to. And likewise, I can do that the, uh, the other direction to make it smaller, okay? So that's uh, one way if you're doing it solo. Um, if you have this measuring tape, you can, uh, you can do that, right? Pass it around your dog's neck, kind of get it close and uh, you know, without them wiggling too much, try and uh, get this um, you know, a little closer to the right size. So, uh, so that's something you can do as well if you need to. But if you don't have a fabric measuring tape, don't worry, you're, uh, you're still covered. Um, if you have some just regular um, string, twine, uh, whatever you might have, you could do the same thing. So we'll just unroll this, put it around our dog. Uh, again, we wanna make sure we get from the sternum to the withers. So got too much here. Let's say like that is good. So we're gonna say like that's good. I've got it held together in the back. So I'm just gonna hold, I've got a loose end and then I have a, um, my finger where it connected, okay? So I didn't have it in my hand, but if you have a Sharpie then, I would just mark that, that line with the Sharpie where my finger was. So I've got that. And if I put it on my dog again, what I would do this properly the first time, so we're gonna put it like that. Then I'd go mark it, and uh, and then you've got a measurement. And I would just take, if you have a regular uh, kind of construction ruler, set that down, and just measure to whatever your marker was. Okay, so that's another alternative if you don't have the fabric um, measuring tape. But that's all we are going to do to get your dog uh, set up. So from there, we're going to take our 19 inches for this dog. Uh, like I said, go to the manufacturer or wherever you are choosing to purchase your harness and, uh, and just see kind of on their table or list where your dog is going to fit with the harness size. Um, if you're kind of stuck between two sizes, I generally would go a little bit smaller. Uh, you would be surprised how small uh, the harnesses look on, on the dog, and uh, especially once they start pulling on them. So I'm gonna show you that here in just a second. All right, so we're gonna, I can't put this on this guy because it'll wreck his ears, but um, we're gonna say this is the right size for his neck. You can, uh, you can see it looks pretty tiny, um, and it is pretty tiny, but we do want it to fit fairly tight. So with that measurement we just took, what we're actually hoping, so you can see this would be the front, sorry, the neck, and that's how the harness would look, okay? So where my, uh, this hand, <laughs> um, that is gonna be the neck of our dog, and then this hand is going to be where we attach our line. So um, this is sort of right way up at the moment, so this X back part is gonna go along our dog's back, and this is going to go along our dog's belly, okay? So this is gonna follow the sternum in that diagram I showed you, and we want to place um, this Y, which is the bottom of the neck, right? We've got a Y here. Um, on that point uh, that we measured it to. So on this guy, um, that would sit right there, okay? Um, so we want, you know, in a perfect world, uh, that sternum where it finishes and kind of plunges off as we get higher, we want that to be right smack dab in the middle of that sort of that dying triangle. Tri diamond. <laughs> oh, why was that so hard to get out? Um, 
but right in the middle there. So ideally that's exactly where it's going to be. Um, but that's where the important uh, sort of caveat on that is that's exactly where it's going to be when your dog is pulling. So you might find that when you're trying them on, it's up a little bit more and that's okay um, because as, as your dog pulls, it's gonna suck onto their body kind of, right? Um, they're gonna put tension in the line. So anything that kind of looks loose um, and kind of wobbly, um, they're gonna put, and it's, it's not gonna stretch the harness like the webbing, um, but it will kind of stretch and suck onto their body as they put um, uh, pressure on it. And, and some tension on the line, right? So if it, if it looks like it's a little bit small when you try it on, it probably fits perfectly. Um, so don't panic if you see that. Um, but likewise, if it's a little bit big, uh, you know, it's not gonna be a huge problem either, um, especially with lower weights, um, which you're gonna start with, or shorter distances, which you're gonna start with. Um, but, uh, you know, there's a little bit of wiggle room there for sure. So if you're just starting, don't worry if it doesn't fit absolutely 100% perfectly because you really won't know until your dog starts to pull and uh, and shows you. So how would you know if it doesn't fit? Um, one, if this, if it's, I'm gonna use the, uh, just this tape here, I think, to demonstrate with you. But if the harness is going, so let's say a good fitting harness is gonna fit like that, right? That's what the webbing should look like, the harness should look like. When it fits, it's gonna leave this shoulder uh, with free motion to move and, um, and sit above the withers, okay? So that's what a good harness would, would look like. If it's too small, you're gonna see this slip up along his neck, right? So it's gonna come away from the sternum, it's gonna come higher on the neck, closer to the collar. And that's where you might hear the dog kind of choking or gasping for air. So if you hear that, it's too too small, um, especially with this X-back style. If you're using sort of an adjustable shorty harness, it might just mean you have to adjust the harness a little bit. But if you hear that that kind of gasping for air or, um, or having trouble breathing, that sort of thing, um, it's probably too small. If it's too big though, what you'll see is the harness slipping off onto the shoulder. So again, if that was sort of a perfect fit, um, you might start to see the harness slide a little bit off the shoulder. So that's gonna interfere with her shoulder movement, um, which we don't want. So those are kind of the things you're looking for, but again, it's really challenging to do this until your dog learns to pull. So I would say if you get, get one in the mail, unless it obviously does not fit, like it's, I'll show you in a second, but if it's too long or you, know, you can't fit it over their head, um, I would give it a try, uh, just because you don't know how it fits until your dog starts pulling. So, so those are kind of the things I would look for. Um, one thing Man Matt doesn't offer, but I'm looking to add to our website for their product, is the length. And that's really important when I show you on this guy, because we're gonna say this neck fits him, okay? Uh, but, um, because he would be an unusual sledding dog for what would be traditionally built for a sledding harness, um, while this would fit probably a lot of non-traditional breeds and, and has, um, like my retrievers wear it, but they still have that similar kind of athletic build um, and, and sort of roughly the same body shape as, uh, and length as, uh, as a regular sledding dog breed would. So where you might have trouble is with shorter back backed breeds or with dogs that have a big neck. So that's one of the reasons I wanted to use this guy because he's a good example of that, right? He's gonna have a little broader neck broader shoulders, but a little shorter body. So uh, to get the neck right, we might not get the body right. So um, again, for this guy, if the, uh, if the neck fits well, it would sit up at his shoulders, but you can see even, even very loosely um, placed, this would be, you know, a foot too long for him, right? At least. So, uh, so you might not be able to go with a standard X-back harness like this. You might have to go to a shorty and uh, I'm just gonna go grab one to show you. All right, so we have a harness. Um, so as I said, if this harness is too long or you're worried it's going to be too long for your dog um, and you don't wanna go the custom route, there are custom harness manufacturers, um, unless you really have trouble finding one that fits, I wouldn't recommend going the custom route right away. Um, as I said, um, 
because your dog's not pulling yet, it's hard to really know what does fit. So I would wait, try a off the shelf one if you can before investing in custom. Uh, but the custom harnesses are still pretty reasonable, so I wouldn't let that part scare you away. Um, I've certainly seen them anywhere from about $25 to $50. So uh, it's definitely not a crazy price range with the custom, or it doesn't have to be. Um, but I would still try off the shelf if you can, can get away with it. Um, until you get into this, at least until you get into the sport and know you like it and uh, you know really know what, what you like in a harness, what your dog likes in a harness, and how you want it to fit. So that can be hard to know um, before you even get your dog pulling. All right, so back to your next option, which would be the shorty. So I'll get a little closer to show you this. So this might be a harness that you have seen or used for your regular dog walk, for um, tracking, nose work, anything like that. Um, it's just sort of a normal uh, short backed harness. So what I like uh, in this man mat one, uh, this is a long distance and this one does have um, some padding and protection. So this does help protect the guard hairs so your dog doesn't lose, um, lose a bunch of his coat. Uh, so I like that. And on the front it does have that webbing and along the belly strap, uh, just not along the kind of ribs strap that would go around the ribs. So, so that is the head. Okay, uh, you can see it has kind of a similar Y, but this Y design is open. Some of them might be closed, but the man mat one is open. So it's got a, an O-ring that all the webbing feeds into. So this, you'd basically, you'd want to be able to put your finger through on this one and touch your dog right in the sternum. So, uh, so that's where we want this one to fit, right? Um, but uh, it's going to have a shorter back, obviously no X back. So this would run, run along your dog's spine, and then you could adjust the side straps to fit your dog. So again, because my dog here is paper, we can't do that, but um, I'll just show you. So we would say set it about there, and uh, it would still, this one would probably end about and around his rib cage, um, which might still be a touch long, but uh, that's, that's roughly what we would be looking at. So you can see all of a sudden this fits him along the back, and then we can adjust the belly straps as needed to, uh, to fit around his belly here, right? So that would be the option I would go to if you're worried that your dog um, is gonna be a little shorter backed than, uh, than will fit a standard harness. So I'm gonna go back to the X-back though quickly and, and talk about it a little bit. So if we had one that fit him, which we don't, um, I kind of want to tell you what it, what it might look like and what else you might be looking for in fit. So while we talk about length, um, I guess I'll finish that thought. So this one is obviously too long for him, but you might, when you get it, you might think it's too short even if it does fit. So often they fit kind of squishy. Um, I was helping a friend the other day, she had a Newfoundlander we were fitting it for, and it went to, you know, when we just put it on loosely, it probably went up to this point on him without any pressure on the line. So if you, if you see that and it's all bunched up here, um, you can see it, if it all happens to be bunched up here and you go, oh my goodness, it's way too short, it won't fit, uh, definitely give it a try. It probably does fit, um, but again, until you're pulling into the harness, you won't see that, you won't see it kind of suction onto the dog and stretch out. So, so even, so even for my guys, when this does fit, uh, when I've loosely applied it, I will probably have, you know, I've just slipped it on. There's no tension or pressure in the line yet. Um, it's probably going to kind of bunch up around the shoulders and, um, you know, the leash attachment here is probably going to be sitting somewhere around there on them. So if it's, if it's stuck on your dog, you know, you just put it on and it's, it's somewhere kind of in this portion of their body. Um, don't panic, it probably does fit. Uh, again, as it, as it stretches out, they put tension in the line, you'll be shocked how far back that will come. So, so that's kind of the next thing to look for. So uh, you've got the measurement for the chest, you're gonna check the length of the dog. Um, so if it's loose, if it's anywhere from here to here, um, when there's no tension on the line to the connection point to your leash, say, hold on, give it a chance. Uh, when the dog does have pressure on the line, you want that connection point to be somewhere just above his tail, 
okay? So that's where it should fit when, when they're pulling and actively engaged and putting a lot of tension on the line. That's kind of roughly where you want it to be, all right? So then the next thing to talk about, this is going to be a little harder to show, um, is uh, sort of this belly strap. All right, so this part's a little harder to demonstrate, but we've got our neck here, so if that's around our dog, we've got our Y connector, and then we've got the line that's going to run along their sternum, like kind of down their belly, and then these, um, what, this webbing, these straps, are going to run up along the rib cage. Okay, so that's how it'll look. So what we want to make sure is that the straps are actually on the rib cage. And I have this problem with Riggs's current harness. Um, again, we tried it. Uh, I bought it before, obviously, before we got started. Dog sledding. It was our first kind of dog sledding harness. And um, it looked like it fit in the store. We kind of were stuck on two sizes. And we went to the t bigger size. And so um, just kind of a word of caution. <laughs> Um, so if we say this dog's ribs end here, there's kind of a line there, so that's where I'm going to pretend his ribs end. I would want that strap to come underneath his belly and then come up and stay on his ribs. So the problem I have with Riggs's harness is when he's in really engaged in it, it's going to come up behind the ribs. So that's getting into kind of the soft area here that has no protection. Um, but he's also not, you know, using his muscles the best. Like that rib is going to be his protection against those, um, you know, straps digging into his stomach, basically. So if you think of it as like a really tight belt around your stomach, is going to hurt a whole lot more than if, you know, backpack strapping across your ribs or something. So that's kind of the way I like to think about it. Uh, so ideally, we also would have that strapping come up on the ribs. So those are the three things you are going to look for when you're looking for a harness that fits your dog. Um, again, you're going to find that find that sternum point to get our measurement, and we want the Y of that X back or any harness to sit on that sternum, directly on that sternum. Next thing you're going to check is kind of the length on your dog. So again, if it's loose, um, it might be anywhere from here to here, uh, but when they're pulling and engaged, we want the the connection point from the harness to our line to be just kind of above their tail, okay? And then lastly, as I just discussed, we want that um, belly strap to come up and stay on their ribs, okay? So we do want free motion behind the shoulder, so that's something to watch out for. If, uh, if the harness is too short, you might get rubbing behind, the, kind of in their armpit, um, especially with the shorty harness not very likely to happen with an x-back style but with the shorty that can happen if the length isn't right for your dog um, so just make sure they've got free motion in their shoulders as well so the last thing to talk about is how we're going to connect it and what you need so um, if we were doing candy cross i would need a waist belt that sit kind of low on my back to take that pressure off my spine so you're going to need a waist belt that fits you uh, next thing we're going to need is a bungee line. So this is a man mat one, it's all in one. This is the candy cross line. So this end, um, I guess it could go either direction, but uh, this end would be the one that I would hook up probably to myself um, on my belt. It's got a bungee there, okay? So that's gonna absorb any impact, um, you know, if your dog runs to the end of the line, any impact on either of you. So if you're, you're dragging behind, your dog kind of lunges ahead, um, again, especially when starting training. You know, if they see a squirrel and lunge or something, this is going to protect them. Likewise, if they're super excited to get going and, you know, they're, they're lunging to get started and you're ready to go, but, you know, they're jumping to the end of that line, that's going to impact, that is going to absorb some of that impact um, on yourself, especially your back, but also on them. So uh, we want to make it easy, as easy as possible on both of your bodies so you can keep doing it. Um, so we've got our connection point to us, we've got our bungee line, and then this one, the rest of the webbing, to a, uh, a brass snap there. And that's what I would hook up to the dog. So we've got one of those, we've got this, this line end, right, our snap, we're going to hook up to our line here. So we're just going to snap that on. So that's our, do our imaginary dog. Imaginary dog, snap, line bungee connect to my waist belt okay so if we were going biking 
or um, scootering or whatever you you wanted to do, um, this would be the line you would connect to whatever vehicle that is, whether that's you skiing, walking, running, uh, kick sled, bike, scooter, um, that's what's going to connect to you. So that's really all you need to get started. Um, but I know harness fit can be very confusing for people. So um, if you've never done it before, obviously, and we, we all want to get it right. We don't want to hurt our dogs. Um, I know you don't want to hurt your dog, so uh, it's important to get it right. I hope that helps you if you are looking to get into dog sledding this winter. Um, there's a lot of really fun sports to get started in, and right now is actually a great time to train, even if you don't have snow. Uh, the cooler weather definitely means it's a good time to you know get out on the bike and start or on the ground and uh, especially before it gets slippery and start to train your dog doing some of that groundwork so you know teaching directional cues and um, and whatnot so it's a good time to get started if you are hoping to get involved in a winter sport um, this is a great time to get going and teach some of that stuff without freezing your fingers and if you're fortunate and you live somewhere where it is nice all the time it's just a great sport to get involved in so the cooler temperatures will make it uh, more accessible to you and your dog which is also good um, we typically i don't know what the the conversion is here can't do it in my head but about 10 celsius is typically the warmest you want to run your dog in when you're doing a dog sledding sport so uh, now that we're into some of the cooler weather it's a little safer to do um, especially some of the faster sports like biking and, and that but um, but it's a great time of year to do it so if you've been thinking about it wanting to give it a try uh, i hope this helps you find a harness that will fit kind of gives you some guidelines for uh, for what to look for in fit and how to measure um, and helps you get started so you can get out there and have some fun with your dog this winter so with that, I will uh, will sign off and I'll see you guys next week. Thanks for tuning in.